My Fertility Path, brought to you by the Fertility Awareness Advocate Initiative. Hello everyone, my name is Nsi Batum and the show is My Fertility Path. This is the only show where we share real stories about infertility, the struggles, the treatment and everything available and the joy that comes there and after. Today on My Fertility Path, we will be looking at preserving your fertility. This to a layman simply means egg storage, embryos, ovarian tissue and sperm for future use. In a moment, we will be joined by a resident doctor, Dr. Bayomi Ajayi, and senior clinical embryologist, Ms. Damilola Atiba. Welcome to the show. With me in the studio, as always, is our resident doctor, Dr. Bayomi Ajayi, CEO of Nordica Fertility Center. Also here is a senior clinical embryologist, both of them will be taking us through the topic of preserving your fertility. You're welcome, Dami. Thank you very much, Nisa. And welcome, Dr. Ajayi. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining me. So my first question would be, why preserve fertility? Well, it's like having an insurance. One thing, um, mm -hmm. we're speaking now, we're not speaking to only female, we're speaking to both male and female. And then during the course of the show, we'll explain better okay. but I'll pick the female we do know that there's a decline in fertility I mean in her environment we always describe the woman as a flower that you know with time you know it breeders and all the all those things but scientifically there's some sense in it because as a woman gets to age of 35 there starts to be a decline in what we call our egg reserve she is born with a reservoir so to speak by 37, there's a sharp decline. And so it's, it declines and our ability to have children declines. So sometimes there are some factors that are out of your hands or out of the woman's hands to control. It could be career, it could be looking for Mr. Right and not getting Mr. Right in time. Really one? It could be <laughs> a disease, it could be a married of things. So we say that at that time, that age, that optimal age, before going into that decline, why not have some sort of insurance? Store the hex. And then when all of these factors have been taken care of, Mr. Right is here, which we've all been looking for, and I would like to meet the Mr. Right when he, one person finally met. But um, when Mr. Right comes, when we sorted out all the other things, career, mm -hmm. you have that at age 45, for example, if the Mr. Right should come and you've frozen your eggs at 25, you have the eggs of a 25 year old and you can have your own children using your own gamut at your own pace. So it's like an insurance. So are you saying that without Mr. Right, I cannot preserve my eggs or I cannot use my eggs? You can even use your eggs, even if Mr. Right doesn't come because there are options of using donor sperms yes. and achieving pregnancy. So it's yes. not really that you have to wait for Mr. Wright till 70. If you get to a particular age and then you decide that Mr. Wright is not coming and um, you want to have an alternative, then you can still use your eggs with donor sperms. Okay. And then I'll, I'll say something to you when we're done. There's never really a Mr. Wright. We're Absolutely. all perfect. And you can put Mr. <laughs> left to become Mr. Wright. It's okay. A doctor. It's okay. <laughs> all right, then. So I, I'm going to ask you this. So at what point do you start thinking about preservation or preserving your fertility? Okay, yeah. I think you can start thinking from age 30, really. Uh, but okay. by 35, you should stop thinking. You should act. So... <laughs> <laughs> right. so, mm -hmm. so, because after that, it's going to decline sharply that the quality, and that's one of the problems that we're having. People are talking about freezing your eggs, freezing your eggs, but they're not qualifying it. And you see, because majority of the people that we have come around to say they want to store their eggs, they're in their forties. And I'm asking them, okay, what do you expect me really to do? You understand? Ice. Because the quality of the eggs and the quantity of the eggs at that point in time 
is not is as not sharp. Really. Yeah, because I, I think because I, I had studied a lot of that as well. So by the time I stored mine, I literally just decided, you know what, I'm giving it up to science. And I think I've done one thing for humanity now, haven't I? <laughs> if, if you studied enough. It was not plenty. Uh -huh. For it to be <laughs> beneficial to another person. Well, it was. Yeah, but there was just about three, I think, that I, uh -huh. I could. Uh -huh. Exactly, three. At that age. So yeah. it is quite daunting. Mm. You're right. So everyone, there's normally the good and the bad sides. Mm. Are there risks involved in, in egg storage well, or fertility storage, as it were? Yeah, well, you know what Dami said to you is that you could store eggs, mm -hmm. you could store embryos, that's where you came in, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, if you're storing eggs, that means probably you are single. If you're storing embryos, that means probably you are married or you're using donor sperm, okay. all right? Now, um, for you to do this, you need to do IVF. And that's where the risk comes in, the risk of IVF. Okay. But we know that the risk of IVF, uh, what we say in the industry is that the risks are rare, but they're real. Okay, the rare is that maybe only one in a thousand will go wrong, but when they occur, that's what differentiates the boys and the men. The ability to be able to diff to be able to recognize this early enough and to be able to treat. So, the commonest problem that you could have from IVF is what we call ovarian hyperstimulation, when you eggs. produce too many eggs, oh, yeah. and that's fortunately that is reducing now because it's a problem all over the world. So. There's so many drug regimen now that can reduce the chance of having hyperstimulation. There's so many, I can say confidently that we've not had any case of hyperstimulation in about eight years. So, oh, that's, a, that's, a, yeah. that's, that's yeah. quite good. So, so because of this regimen that are available now. Okay. And can I ask one more question? So with hyperstimulation, mm -hmm. If people like to have chances, so do you think that there's also a positive to hyperstimulation apart from the fact that the woman probably wants to, is going to put on weight which she doesn't like and then, you know, does it affect, does it hurt, does it, is there any physical change that happens to the woman? Does, what really happens? Whoa, whoa, hyperstimulation is something you don't want to see because it can kill. So there's fatality? It can, it can. Yeah, but now, like I said, this is not common anymore. In those early days, some clinics will have about 2% uh, hyperstimulation rate, 0.2% hyperstimulation rate. But right now, it's really very rare. But that does not mean that when it happens, it's like a, it's like a race. The moment you have hyperstimulation, you must ensure that you are in front of it. The moment it leaves you behind, you are in trouble. Yes. And your patient is in trouble. So the, that's why it's so important to be able to recognize that. There is a question of trust. I come to you for egg storage. How can I be double sure that my eggs are safe with you and you're not going to use my eggs if I haven't donated them? You're not going to use my eggs for someone else without my knowledge because I think that would be an infringement on my privacy and my rights. Yeah. So how do I trust you? What... what, what um, um, very valid question. Um, first of all, when we do the cryopreservation, we collect from a patient A, for example. Mm -hmm. The eggs are stored in a particular place dedicated to patient A, so it's traceable. So once patient A comes with our eggs, we label it, give it colors, location, in the kind of, it's stored in a special container. And that container has to be maintained at a special sub-zero temperature of about minus 196 degrees. Oh, that's freezing. Now, I, I, I try to, <laughs> yes, it is freezing. I, I try to bring it home to the patients by explaining to them we all have freezers in our homes. Now, the liquid nitrogen gas that we see that it changed to make it cool is actually what we use in those coolers and coats in the laboratory to keep them cool. And so scientifically, they can stay for as long as we maintain that condition. Mm -hmm. But we say that ethically, because of some rules, 10 years, you can store up to 10 years or even more if you know we have indications for it. For example, if we collect ovarian tissue from a young girl because the girl has cancer and we want to preserve fertility, of course, we're going to be storing that for longer than 10 years. 
So that's where the assurance come and it is not ethical in any way for us to use the eggs for another person without donation because even freezing we obtain consent from you to freeze to the freeze. eggs. Okay. If you are married we obtain consent from your spouse as well to freeze the eggs and okay. so there are so many contingencies within that consent to say that in case this happens this is what to do with the eggs. We just don't make that decision. Okay very quickly um, what are the categories of people who, who can store their eggs? We've mentioned um, career, we, we, people that are career focused, we've mentioned people who are yet to get married. Now interestingly, people who have high risk occupations, for example, those in the military, pilot, you can, you know, those mm -hmm. are the things to explore. And it's not only the woman, the men too, you can come and store sperm. Also in certain occupations, you're working in oil company or you're an engineer that can compromise your fertility potential, fertility. you can come and stop. All right, this is and far from over. Yeah, Doctor, yeah, no. Okay. Wait, quickly, quickly, just tell me oh, what yes. you're saying. Some medical conditions also you want to store your eggs, especially okay. in this environment where women have fibroids. And you're operating and on your fibroids. Thing. You are <laughs> operating on your fibroids the second time because that can affect your ovarian reserve. If you're not ready to have babies yet, you can store your you eggs. You can store. Endometriosis is also another condition. Absolutely. Adenomyosis. Sure, they are I cousins. They are cousins, yes. <laughs> All right, this is definitely not over. So when we come back, we will be talking about educating us and the role the society plays in this. You're welcome back to the show and you're still watching My Fertility Path. Both Dr. Jai and clinical embryologist Damilola have so far told us what preserving one's fertility for the future is about. Do Nigerians or Africans at large believe in this? We're going to the streets, so let's hear from them. About freezing my eggs, I don't think so. I don't think I would be able to take that risk. With the knowledge I have now, if I wasn't married at 35 and I'm close to, you know, menopause, of course I would want to freeze my eggs so that I can have a children of my own. I don't like people cutting me up and closing and all, so I wouldn't. I don't mind not having a child. That's why we have options of adopting so I can adopt a child. Yes, I can freeze my eggs, have babies in the future. I mean, depending on the medical condition at that point, if the chances are slim and I'm young, I feel like it's not a bad thing. I could do that to increase my chances of having children in the future. I'm also from the school of thought that not all women need to have children. So if you don't have children, you can adopt. I don't, if it's so, what, what if it's so expensive for some of us to freeze eggs? I probably won't, I wouldn't explore. But I, 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 there shouldn't be a problem. If you think that you would have difficulty having children later on in life, you can go ahead. If you're turning 35 and you are married, and you, so you don't even, it's not necessarily about whether you're married or not. It, it, you, could be, you could be career focused and not ready. People are having kids older and older. So I think that yes, it's a fantastic option. You should freeze your eggs. Oh wow, I thought as much. <laughs> so doctor, how can we begin to educate people about these things? Well, I guess we need to be a little bit fair that this is a new part of medicine and therefore we need to continue to discuss about this at such a fora like this yes. so that people can be aware of what is possible you know, is it probably the, and it's technology. So uh, Africa and Africans, we probably are the last people to embrace okay. technological advancements. I'm, I'm, I'm not, no, no, ins, no insult. No shade, no, as no, we no. say. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's the truth because one, probably anything that is driven by technology comes, it's pricey. True. And that's one of the, th and you know, in this part of the world, government does not do most things. Uh, so there is no insurance to cover it, there is not, so you have to pay out of pocket and that limits also access to some of these things. 
So yes. I think uh, we just need to continue to talk about it so that people who can also afford it. And then also you raised one very vital thing that I want us to you You even ask us about why should you trust us? Yes. So that is also one big thing, that trust is also an issue. But uh, what I say is that if you don't trust us to store your eggs, then you, sh you can't trust us to do IVF at all. Makes because sense. you don't see eggs, you don't see sperm. So there's a lot of trust involved in even doing ART. And that's one of the reasons is also that we say, for you to do some of these things, you need to do your own due diligence. You just don't come to me because I say I've opened a clinic. You yes. need to find out mm -hmm. what I, what's the pedigree of the people behind this clinic. Yes, because that is a major problem. You, you, exactly. You, there's so many people in the market. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'll tell you a story. A 50-year-old woman. I like stories. <laughs> a 50-year-old, bless her, bless her soul now, oh, she's, of, uh, oh. she's passed on, oh. um, was diagnosed with uh, cancer and she'd not had a baby through oh. life. And she went to a doctor who said oh. she was, he was going to okay. store her eggs, 50 year old. And he supposedly stored the oh, eggs, nice. maybe in his freezer at home, I don't know. And uh, this woman now met with somebody who was now saying that she stored her eggs because yes. she was going through treatment for her. And the person said, no, are you kidding? You're 50. And she said, yes, yeah, she just stored her eggs last week. <laughs> So there, there, there's so many things also going on, sharp practices going on. Yeah. It's not confined to Nigeria, even in some other countries. No, I believe yes, you. Yes, because believe the, you. one of the scam about egg freezing is that people are just not freezing enough. Right, so you have to freeze, you have to freeze enough. enough. Yes. Because when you look at it, it's, it's like a diminishing return. You freeze, we say that you freeze an average of 15 eggs and that's good quality eggs we're looking at below 35 years because it's not all the eggs that will survive it's not all the eggs that can be fertilized it's not all the eggs that will become embryos and it's not all embryos that, become that will life survive birth. so once you look at that it declines so it declines. if someone says that oh i thought six eggs somewhere it might not just it might defeat the whole purpose personally i don't even understand storing your ovarian tissue so please tell us how do you do that what is it about we mentioned egg freezing and we mentioned the number uh, earlier. Now, mm -hmm. when you freeze eggs, you've frozen 15 eggs and that's the end of it. But with ovarian tissue, it's much more preservation. You're preserving the tissue such that it can be returned back and then ovarian function would resume. Limitless eggs in quotes. Oh. Um, you can have that depending on the age that that ovarian, of course, we, we, we wouldn't variant. take ovarian tissue from a 50 year old and say we want to preserve that depending on the age. So as against a frozen 50 15 eggs. Mm -hmm. Why would, do you want to do ovarian tissue in cases where I've mentioned earlier where you have pre um girls who have uh, medical cases in i.e. cancer or you have a situation whereby you want to preserve fertility and like I mentioned egg freezing is not um, going to be exhaustive, it's not an option. You can yes. preserve ovarian tissue, tissue as well. So it's, 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 a, it's much more banking than egg freezing. Is and it the same process or? More or less, slightly the same, more or less. Um, to, to her. <laughs> and to me, but to yes. me it's not. <laughs> to you it's not. <laughs> yeah, because to her, yeah, she has to preserve it. But the, what we're saying here is that we're taking ovarian tissue, so you need surgery. You know, that laparoscopic That's surgery. That's coming from. Yeah, laparoscopic surgery to take the sample. Laparoscopic, that is not actually pinhole. incision, no, pinhole. No, pinhole, pinhole, surgery. pinhole surgery. To take the ovarian tissue and also to replace when you want to replace. So, and you can also keep just like she said, for as long as you want to keep. Uh, mainly, what we're using it for. When she said pre pubata, that means young girls who have not even started menstruating. So it can be used for people who are seven years old, for example. So... So the application... Is that not quite invasive for the child? Just asking. That might be the only way that she'll be able to have children in the future. Especially you know now that cancer in children actually probably has the best cure rate. Yes, the, yes. There's so much progress. That yes, there is. Yeah. Yes, there's been so, so much yeah. in that. So now the, the girl gets of age mm -hmm. and she wants to have children. So that might be the fallback. Okay then. Dami, thank you so much. Dr. Jai, thank you so much. When Always we return, we will be looking at the different options available to preserve your fertility for the future. Stay with us.
and you are still watching My Fertility Path and this, in the segment, we will be looking at options for treatment and I'm still here with our resident doctor, Dr. Bayami Ajayi and our embryologist, Danny Atiba. Now let's talk about treatment options. Yeah, the options to, if you want to preserve your fertility. Yeah. Yes. So for the men and for the women. Yes. Okay. For the men, it's possible to store sperm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And hmm. then you, you can start mm -hmm. that is known, that's been on for quite a while. Yes, it has. And then you could also store testicular tissue. That is more experimental now. It's at, it's now. Yeah. So, but it's something that people are working on, you know, because just like now we can, we, most things were experimental before. Yes. For example, in the female now, uh, you could store egg, you could store embryo, you could store ovarian tissue, just like we said. Until a few years ago, storing eggs was like uh, a fallacy, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe Dami will tell you more about that, then I'll tell you more ways that we can. Okay, so let's talk about the egg freezing. Okay, the egg freezing, the woman has to go through some sort of stimulation to stimulate the ovaries in order to produce more eggs, then we get a quart of eggs. But the thing is, it's not all the eggs that we get that are freezeable in quotes. Eggs have different level of maturity even when we retrieve it. So it has to be the most matured that we would store that qualifies for freezing. And that's why sometimes when we have advised the woman to freeze not less than 15 eggs, she might have to go through more than one stimulation in order for us to get that optimally. And for it to, of, of course, serve the purpose in the future should she come back to use it. And um, we also have the option of freezing the embryos yeah, if, she, yeah. if she's partnered or if she's willing to use sperm donor. We could also do ovarian tissue. Like Doctor mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. ovarian tissue cryopreservation was experimental even up to a few years ago. Mm -hmm. um, last year, the American Society of Reproduction just adopted it and removed the experimental from it. Now it's clinical. So some is of it, the is techniques... It, when you say it's clinical, is it a clinical stage or has it moved from clinical it, stage it to actualization? It has moved from research to, to clinical, clinical stage. So it, it's bona fide for you to be to offer that to a patient. Okay, you know, there were a lot of ethical things involved in it which mm. has been cleared now. So just like for testicular tissue, we hope that we get to that point where we are able to do that clinically as well. So those are the options of what you can Okay. Do. What I would do is... Um, I normally pick up questions from social media okay. and I'm going to ask some of these questions. I've picked a few. So I'll start with this first one. It says, what is the ideal age to freeze my eggs? Like we mentioned, at 30. 30? 30 years of age for the woman. And um, for at the 35, man? for the man, we say that, uh, you know, there's this myth that a, a man's fertility is preserved forever, but we do know that there's some so, some things that are affected from age 45 for the man. So for, for the man, 40, if there are some factors that you see around you that yes. you would know that you would need fertility preservation, then you need to do it at age 40. Okay. So there's a second question here. It says, how common is oocyte cryopreservation? How common is it? Mm. Not, not as common as we would like it to be because um, in this environment is still a foreign concept. Mm. There's still, the, we mentioned trust earlier, the mm -hmm. trust issue, can yes. I store my eggs somewhere? There's this connection that a woman feels with her eggs, why would I drop my eggs somewhere? And there's the financial aspect to it as well. Which I'm sure is. Which is, is very, um, which we have, to, it's real, you know, it's a financial investment that a lot of people might say that why, what if I freeze my eggs at 30, what if I get married at 31 and have spent that money and investments that I don't get any returns on and I might not even need the eggs anyways. So those are some of the things that come into play. Okay, so how is oocyte cryopreservation accomplished? Well, there are two sides to it, the clinical and the laboratory. So I take the clinical then we take the laboratory. Okay. Yeah. Uh, for the clinical, you need to do IVF. Okay. That means you have to use drugs for a certain period of time. They have to be monitored, and then we have to bring out the eggs uh, by uh, a small surgery. It does not involve cutting at all. It's through the you it's put through the, through the vagina through the and vagina. bring out the eggs, and then at that point in time, we hand over to Dami to start. Egg. And then we get the eggs <laughs> and we look at them, we look at the matured ones, good quality, mm -hmm. 
and we put some some form of solution that would protect them, we call them cryoprotectants, that can protect them at that sub-zero temperature because the rationale is that at the sub-zero temperature you stop biological activity and so they are frozen in time, so, so to say. frozen in time, yeah. meaning that you're dead in a certain space and then you bring it back to life. I just exactly. don't understand. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, so yeah. some sort of concept it's like that. So that's what we do. We pause the time. Pausing the biological we pause, clock. We, we pause it. Ah, oh, that's brilliant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so what are my options for preserving fertility in as a cancer patient? We've mentioned depending on the age mm. and the sex. For male sperm, if you're younger, testicular tissue. For the female, eggs, embryos, ovarian tissue, depending on what your circumstances are. Oh. Because sometimes for cancer patients, we might be handicapped in getting eggs, in terms of cryopreserving eggs. And yes. here's what I mean. The time to diagnosis and the time that we have to stimulate in order to get the eggs and cancer treatments might not be enough for us to get the number of mm. eggs. Some especially in this environment some of them have started the cancer treatment that has already compromised the ovarian reserve oh. before even coming so how many IVF cycles would they do we also want to look at there are some cancers that are susceptible to the stimulation drugs that we are going to use so we might not look at that option we'll be looking at ovarian tissue option so that's why i said that depending on what the circumstances are at that particular point we look at egg embryos or or ovarian, ovarian tissue, tissue. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I, we can add some ancillary things to that okay for example if you are um, you're doing cancer treatment that involves uh, radiotherapy yes okay we could trans transpose the ovaries change the position of the ovaries okay so to sure. to re uh, to yeah. reduce the exposure the to exposure. Okay. for example if you, the the pelvis is where the um, radi radiotherapy is going to be applied to we can transpose the ovarian tissue the ovaries to another position okay. until you have done that and then we'll bring it back. But that's they're not as sure as what. As what? Yeah, yeah. It's when you don't have any other choice that you do that. Are there any risks involved in uh, in freezing eggs, embryos? Is there what what can happen? No, we've mentioned the risk itself is in doing IVF. Okay. Really, but that I get this question and I understand where you're coming from. Yes. If I use frozen eggs, does that mean that the child is a widow or a yes. normal child? You know, absolutely not. Absolutely, absolutely, really? absolutely not. We post mm -hmm. logical. You've paused it. That's all. So we it's did. fine. Yeah. So it's fine. I was going to ask a question about um, patients um, uh, prostate cancer. Can you get anything from them, just quickly? So we sure, sure, sure. They actually the the that concept of storing. Uh, fertility or preserving fertility came from them. We're just now applying it to other people. To other people. Yeah, because it's because of cancer patients that that first started. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for throwing light on this. Thank you, Doctor. I, I can't keep, I'm going to keep thanking you every time I see you. Very soon I'll say, Mention it. Here. Mention it. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, Tam. It's always You're a welcome. joy to have you here. And thank Same you all here. so much for watching. I hope, you know, as I always say, that we've learned how to preserve and how we can preserve our fertility for the future. Always remember, like I say, infertility should never define you. See and speak to someone today. My name is Ansi Bertem. Keep sharing, keep educating, and I'll see you next time. My Fertility Path, brought to you by the Fertility Awareness Advocate Initiative.